There are two sides to coming to terms with an idea that's uncomfortable, unpleasant, or frightening. One is the intellectual side, the facts, the logic, etc. The other is the emotional side. I'm making this video to address a few of the basic mathematical foundations for what I believe will be the greatest collapse in history. And this video is a precursor and in fact a prerequisite for my next video which will be attempting to get the message across on a more emotional level. All right, so let's start with the basics. Fact number one, the U.S. imports about 66% of its oil. And this is common knowledge. Fact number two, 70% of that oil is used for transportation. Also common knowledge. Fact number three, the U.S. dollar is not backed by anything physical. It's backed by debt originating from the issuance of bonds. Fact number four, the U.S. debt, currently over $14 trillion, but growing, cannot be paid back. And the rest of the world knows this. Fact number five, Oil is currently only sold on the global market in U.S. dollars. And this is due to a set of agreements between the U.S. and OPEC. However, this doesn't just affect OPEC. When Canada buys oil, they buy it in dollars. When France buys oil, they buy it in dollars. This particular situation is often referred to as the petrodollar status. Fact number six, the necessity to have dollars in order to purchase oil on the global market creates the demand for the dollar. And for anybody who would like to dispute this, please refer to fact number three. Fact number seven, the value of the dollar is directly tied to the demand for the dollar. Supply and demand, basic economics. The obvious conclusion is the petrodollar status, which holds up the value of the dollar. Fact number eight, China and Russia just recently agreed to stop using the dollar in all their bilateral trade. This includes oil. Now, when Saddam Hussein did the same thing, we invaded Iraq. But we can't invade China or Russia. Now, all the facts that I've outlined here are simple, publicly accessible, verifiable. I'm not going to hold everybody's hand and take them out there to do their research. If you want to contest one of these specific ideas, you actually need to do the research yourself. Now, the following are the conclusions that I draw from these facts. The United States will lose its petrodollar status. I don't know when, I don't know the exact date, but it's inevitable. When it does, the demand for the dollar will fall precipitously. And as demand drops, the value of the dollar will evaporate. This means hyperinflation. And once hyperinflation is fully underway, other countries will begin refusing to accept dollars for products that they export. This will happen very very quickly. Now remember, the U.S. imports 66% of its oil, and that oil is not going to keep coming in if exporters no longer accept U.S. dollars. And remember, we established 70% of all domestic oil consumption is used for transportation, so if you subtract that 66% from the 70%, you're left with about 4% left for transport in general. Now it's important to realize that when we say transport, it includes 18-wheelers and all sorts of supply chain transportation, which make up a considerable part of that 70%. In this country, food transport and agriculture are completely dependent on oil. And obviously you can't cut out food transport without causing starvation. Logical conclusion, you're not going to be able to get gasoline to drive your car. Nobody is. However, even cutting back all individual car usage to zero will not be enough to prevent catastrophe. And here's why. Agriculture, as we currently practice it in the U.S., is completely dependent on a constant stream of inputs which require transportation, especially the animal industry. Take, for instance, a chicken farm. The farm normally gets deliveries of corn or other feedstocks on a regular basis. Almost no farms grow both the feed and raise the animals. The loss of the petrodollar would lead to astronomical price increases for that transport, and that will translate into astronomical prices in the grocery store. And what you have to understand is this explosion in the cost of transport will affect every single other industry. And as the cost of doing business skyrockets, unemployment will also skyrocket. Now, a large number of the states are already on the verge of bankruptcy. They're not going to be able to feed and house this massive influx of the unemployed. People will go hungry. And when people go hungry long enough, they get desperate. And they become very, very dangerous. Now, I'm not telling you this to scare you. But if you really understand it, it probably will. When I first came to terms with this, it was earth-shattering for me. And it's no exaggeration to say that I hardly slept for weeks. But at a certain point, you have to make a decision to put your fear aside and start getting ready. Some things we can't change, but some things we can. The trick is knowing the difference. Cool.